Welcome friends, this is Derek from TCI, and today I'm going to help you learn network cabling. For the job site that we'll be working in, it's a reasonable size at about 160 wires, all of it CAT6A. Whenever we get a new job, one of the first things we want to do is visit the site and get a look at what is in the ceiling and how hard it would be to get the wires down the walls. For instance, in some of the locations called out on the plans we were given, about 20 wires need to come down and fit into cubicle systems. So we are here today examining whether or not any particular challenges will be posed. After the survey, we'll take some notes, sketch up some drawings, and make a wire run list. After we're satisfied that we know the workspace well, we'll let the builders finish what they're doing before we go and get all our CAT6 and bring our tools onto the job site. On this job, there'll be some IT staff working in concert with us, so they'll be doing some of the tasks. For instance, this network frame they've pre-assembled for us. It'll be our job to do the cable ladders that are above this frame, as well as the ceiling entries and most of the cable pulling. But the IT guys will help out wherever they can. We're able to set up our spools pretty much immediately and get started because we surveyed the ceiling earlier so we know exactly which way we want to go. When it comes to running wires, you do as many as you can manage with these spools, and then you take it to the furthest outlet first and work your way backwards. That way, as you get near the end of the job, the job becomes easier as you go along. To do this kind of work with just a few people and still work efficiently, one of the things that we use is this nylon string that's called mule tape. It's just a thick, heavy-duty string that we pull through the ceiling before we pull any cables. Then, each roll, we tape onto that mule string and pull it forward. Then we seesaw it right back to where it was, tape on another set, and pull it forward again. Do this over and over again so that you don't have to thread your way through the ceiling with each group of wires that you need to install. One of the other steps that we use in order to work quickly, as you saw earlier, we had a wire run list. That means we know how many wires we need to run and whether we've run them yet. It can be easy to get confused and accidentally double up or skip an outlet without meaning to. Whenever we're attaching a new set of wires to the string, we label each one of them so that we don't forget. The Sharpie marks that we put are not for the customer. They're going to get a printed label that's the 100% finished version. But just for now, while we're roughing things into the outlets, the Sharpie is good enough for our uses. After wiping out our cable spools, we've neared the end of the rough-in phase. Roughing in usually indicates that we've got all the wires where they need to be, except it's a little sloppy at each outlet. There's no labels, there's no faceplate, and they haven't been tested yet. And not all of them have been terminated. Also, during the rough-in phase, most of the ceiling areas are pretty sloppy as well. Before we close up the ceiling, we're going to install some supports to help us when it comes to dressing these cables. We can't let them hang or droop or fall or lay on anything that's up in the ceiling. They need to be independently supported. And that's what this uni strut on the floor is about. We've measured the exact spots and we're gonna go around with a Hilti nailer and get these uni struts installed in the ceiling so that they're holding up our cables. After that, we'll begin the finishing process in earnest. For us, 
The finishing process involves putting up cable ladders and other accessories in the server area. Make sure everything has connectors, all face plates are up, everything is labeled, and everything is tested. We go through the ceiling and we dress all of those loose bundles of cable so that they look a lot tighter. The slack from that tightening is brought forward to the face plates and not backwards towards the server room. When it comes to the furniture, we're usually trying to thread things through the base of the cubicles or whatever access path the furniture provides. It's pretty common that not all of the furniture arrives and is assembled at the same time. In our particular case, there's going to be some furniture delivered in a couple of weeks. What we're going to do is leave those cables roughed in, but we will put connectors on them and we will test them and label them to make sure that they're operational. People will be sitting at these desks even though it's not completely 100% built. When the final pieces of the furniture are brought, we will come back and thread them through the base of the furniture again. While the team members wrap up doing the furniture and face plates at one end, at the other end in the server room, someone needs to keep pace with that installation by finishing the patch panels. This way, we can test and label, making sure that we've got the right cables in the right face plates and that everything matches. You can see here that we've organized the CAT 6A by color and panel. These different color panels and cables have different purposes. They'll be labeled and patched into equipment depending on whether they are VoIP, IP camera, or workstation cables. Now one of the big challenges that we're running into on this job is that the customer does not want any vertical cable managers, which are fairly standard when you're using an open frame like this one. Without that vertical manager present, it's really challenging to organize the cable bundles as they go into the panels. So we're going to have to use a little bit of creativity to get this to look decent. All things being equal, I really prefer having a vertical cable manager, rolling the slack into that, and then entering the panels from the left and right side of this open frame. Without that, it looks a little sparse. But that's okay, we're gonna make do. The IT consultants are busy getting all of their switches and other equipment provisioned. And since we're here, this is the reason that I don't like to put my switches and my panels far apart from each other. It's really difficult to route your patch cables in a nice way. That's why I interleave my panels and my switches so that short patches are all we need. You can see if I had piled all my switches here on the bottom that it would be really challenging and really difficult to maintain. So if you have the opportunity to lay out your own rack, I suggest putting your panels and your switches right next to each other. We're getting close to the end of this job. We only have a few things left to do. One of them is putting TVs up on the wall and making sure that the Cat6 connects the TV to the network so that they can stream. We also have some Unify brand card readers for door access. These are fairly bare bones and I wasn't super thrilled with the feature set but they get the job done. And I gotta say, using your phone's NFC feature to unlock it just by touching it with your cell phone is pretty cool. For those card readers to be able to unlock the door, we hired a locksmith to help us electrify the door. We don't like to use door strikes because in a multi-tenant space, you actually need to cut into the frame and most of your leases, when they're over, force you to repair that damage. If you just electrify the lock and take away the power when you move out, then the keys still work and the landlord is happy.
welcome. In addition to these card readers, we're also going to be installing an interphone system. It looks worse than it is. If you get stuck with one of these, all we needed to install it was a single CAT6 cable. With the Enterphone, card readers, and CAT6A all installed, tested, and working, it's time for us to let these people be. They've got quite a lot of pressure that they're dealing with. They're moving the whole office, and a ton of projects are getting crunched all into the same schedule. So it will be some weeks before they're able to really tidy up their switches and make everything presentable. If I get the opportunity, I'll visit them again and take some final shots and post it later. But I think you get the idea. We're going to wrap it up here, and we really appreciate having you along for the ride. We'll see you again real soon in the next one. Happy network building, everyone.